Hello, welcome to Resale Coder and let me tell you why you need to apply some principles from software architecture into your apps because otherwise your apps are going to turn into a huge mess and you are not going to know what to do with them because hey, spaghetti code can never do any good. So if you are like me and you started out programming a bunch of years ago, you started out programming making spaghetti code and making a mess everywhere that you could. When, for example, we take Android code, putting everything inside a single activity is not a good idea. When we take Flutter, putting everything inside your main file, inside your some widget, one widget, is not a good thing because, well, it's going to turn into a mess pretty soon. And uh, this can apply to any kind of a language, any kind of a framework. Don't put everything into one file, into one class, into one module, because it's going to turn into a mess. So what can you actually do with that? Well, you can adapt some architecture patterns, and I call them like that, but you can call them something else. I think that that is the proper name for them, but I am not sure. But what I am sure about is that they can help you. And what are they? Well, they are, for example, Model View Presenter, Model View Controller, Model View View Model. For Dart, there is also the block pattern, which is a business logic component pattern. Then you have Redux and I don't know what else. And, but basically, what they have in common is that they try to separate concerns. They try to manage your code into separate parts so that you can uh, make sense of it and you can come back to it and edit it later. And that edit it later is really important here because you think that you are writing your code once and then you can forget about it. But uh, that is not a good thing to have in mind when you are writing your code because actually what you are doing the most is that you come back to your already written code and then you try to modify it, you try to debug it, you try to fix it unless you are doing something like test-driven development where you, where you are writing tests first and then you are only writing code, in which case the probability of failure is really low if you are writing your tests properly. But uh, that's for a separate tutorial. If you are not doing uh, test-driven development and you are not even doing software architecture properly, then you are going to end up with a code that is uneditable and also you should apply test-driven development to your code, but uh, again, that is not something that I, that I am going to cover here. But either way, at least software architecture is going to make your code much better and much clearer. Because what happens? For example, take MVVM. You have your mod layer, you have your view model, and you have your views. Or that is pretty much the same in uh, MVP, which is model view presenter, you have model, you have your views and you have your presenter. And what's the most important part about any kind of a software architecture is that you are separating your domain layers, so to say. So you have models. Models are something that is the model of your dot. So for example, your users have a model classes, like they have email, they have password or some kind of a token which you are exchanging with the server. They have something stored inside of them. Then you have some other classes, for example, I don't know, chat message. You have a class for chat message, which represents that message, right? That is your model layer. Also, your model layer is something that the code which handles uh, writing to your database, fetching data from your from network and all of that kind of stuff regarding data. Then you have view models or presenters or something else which are doing things which concern themselves with uh, taking what is in the model layer and then pushing it to the view layer. So they are like a mediator between those two layers, between models and between views. You have view models or presenters and uh, or something else. Obviously, you don't really need to have those three like really separated out like that. You can have a different kind of separation, but you should have some kind of separation which makes sense and which makes the code modular and easy to understand and easy to modify, right? This is not a holy grail, but this is how it's mostly done because it makes sense to separate them into these three layers. So when you have the view model or the presenter, 
you just, it's like a glue between all of those two. And uh, then you have views which are concerning themselves only with displaying the provided data to the screen, to the user or making it uh, appear in a console if you are making a console app or doing anything like that because the view is only concerned with one thing, displaying the stuff to the user. And actually with these three layers we can come back to the test-driven development or to tests in general because when you have spaghetti code in Android or anywhere else you are mixing up the platform specific code with your own business logic which makes testing kind of hard because you cannot really test an activity or you cannot test a widget which is doing a bunch of things in Flutter. You cannot test something in Angular which is combining like which is inside the HTML, right? Because you can write code in HTML with special tags. If you don't separate your stuff out, then you are going to have problems with testing. And if you don't test, your apps are going to be much more prone to failure because, hey, they're not tested. So what do you know what's going to happen to them? But if you separate your code properly, you're going to be able to test it really nicely because you are not going to have platform dependent code intermixed with uh, all of the other code. So you can write unit tests, you can write even tests for the UI, but those will be a separate kind of tests. So really you are, it's a win-win situation for UI tests and also for unit tests and also for the integration tests, right? All right, so really try to apply some software architecture to your apps because otherwise they're going to turn into a huge pile of stinking mess which not a single person is going to be able to touch or not even willing to touch because, hey, there are many developers out there which are past a project and they just say that, oh, we need to rewrite this project because it's such a mess, such a rotting pile of mess that we cannot do anything with it, but we can only rewrite it. And that is not something that you should be doing because rewriting takes a lot of money, takes a lot of effort and a lot of uh, stress and uh, tears and uh, blood and sweat. So definitely you don't want to be rewriting code when you don't have to. And especially if that rewriting is only because someone somewhere sometime didn't know how to code properly and how to separate architecture into different parts. So if this video helped you with uh, understanding what software architecture is and how to use it and why you should be doing it, definitely give this video a like and also share it. If you don't want to miss more videos like this, subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell button so that you are not going to miss any of my new videos. Also, if you have anything to say, if you have any suggestions or questions, leave them in the comments. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter and see you in the next video.